Uh, good evening. Um, welcome to our museum. Um, my name is Douglas Cardinal. I'm an architect. Um, I, I remember uh, when I uh, was working with the elders, they, I felt that uh, they wanted me to be able to, to deal with um, the white paper that was put out by Pierre Elliott Trudeau um, by, uh, by showing how they wanted to be able to look at the future and provide proper education for their children and develop a concept of Indian control of Indian education to get rid of the residential schools. So, um, and of course, the elders always believe and always taught us that um, we have this gift of life and, and all of creation is beautiful. It's all good, there is no bad. There's just good and a crooked good that needs to be straightened out. And uh, the white paper was sort of a crooked good because the elders um, asked me to come and deal with that white paper by presenting some alternative solutions um, on how they would look at the future. Rather than be terminated, as the government of Canada wanted to do at the time, was to be able to thrive and to be able to make a contribution to the future. So uh, I had the, so the elders asked me if I would please put together their vision to deal with uh, the uh, white paper put out by Pierre Elliott. And uh, so I was asked to to actually learn all the ceremonies and, and, and be part of understanding the really heart and base of the culture by going on uh, the many rituals and ceremonies that the elders had um, inherited after thousands of years. They've uh, kept that knowledge alive. They're the books of knowledge of our people and so I was asked to, to go through all the ceremonies with them, the fasts and the sun dances and the, and the vision quests, uh, the, uh, the sweat lodges and all of these ceremonies that teach you how to live in harmony with yourself, with your fellow man and with all life around you and to be taught in these traditions was a tremendous gift of which I had the opportunity. Um, at the time it was difficult because many of the teachings were not allowed. Indeed, uh, there was an elder that was highly respected where um, the people on the reserve were um, asked to, um, in a sense, participate in nailing all the windows and doors shut to his cabin and burning him alive because he had the audacity to carry the, the teachings and the culture of our people. So um, <clears throat> the elders at that time decided that the only way that they could practice the ceremonies was go to the mountains. So they had um, a camp in the mountains called Small Boys Camp that followed the traditions, the ceremonies, and the way of life. In this camp, of course, men, women were highly respected because we actually um, come from a matriarchal, matrilineal culture. Uh, the Anishinaabe people and the Haudenosaunee people uh, virtually had clan families. And it was the women that made all the decisions at home and all the women made decisions in the community 
and the women made the decisions for the nature, nations. And as uh, men, we revered the mothers of our children and revered our mothers. And so in reverence for the women in our lives, we implemented those decisions. That was our job as men, to implement the decisions. Uh, right now, of course, we have an upside down world where it's a patriarchal system of power and control. And that's the colony, colonists that came and imposed this patriarchal system on us of power and control. Whereas ours was a peaceful um, culture uh, based on loving and caring and uh, and that we were taught that the power of love is much greater than the hard power of force. So um, it's a different way of seeing the world, a different world view. And uh, in presenting uh, to Pierre Elliott Trudeau and the cabinet at the time, which I was asked to do by the 52 chiefs of Alberta at the time, um, in learning the teachings of the elders, um, that's how I met Pierre Elliott, actually, by presenting this vision to the cabinet of how we saw ourselves in the future. And that, in many ways, our goal was to, to teach the immigrant culture to love as we love, to teach them uh, to care for each other and care for the environment and care for all living things, and that because all life is sacred. So that was the vision that we presented to the government at the time. And he was very moved, and at the time he had not yet uh, married or had children, but he said, if I had children, he said, that's the place that I would send them, to a place like that. And he was very inspired by that. And, uh, and so um, I think he changed his mind about terminating our culture and back to put indigenous rights in the constitution. So it's always doing things in a, a loving, caring way, in a positive way, I feel, is the way we can change things in the world. And uh, so um, then at the time, his crooked good also was to uh, centralize all of the resources. And of course, that totally wiped out uh, Alberta at the time because uh, the companies just moved away from Alberta who were going to develop the oil if the federal government was going to take over the resources of Alberta. So we, as a firm, uh, you know, did the work that we were to do as architects were lo was lost. And so we thought, well, we can't be a regional architect anymore serving just Alberta. We have to expand to be a national architect. So we were looking at ways to become um, a, a national architect. And then Pierre Elliott Trudeau put out a competition for the National Museum. And so we said, we're going to have to do that project because that would be able to help us survive and make a contribution at the same time. So we have to broaden our perspective and we have to be part of this competition. So, um, so I went back to the elders and they said, yes, I mean, it's very important you must realize all of our Anishinaabe people always regarded for thousands of years, Ottawa is our capital of all of our Anishinaabe nations. From the Atlantic to the Rocky Mountains and south, Ottawa was always our center. Always, really, it was our indigenous city. Ottawa means a place where you come in peace and trade. And so tribes that were 
not Anishinaabe, tribes from the south, tribes from all over, would come to Ottawa. And the Algonquin people were the host nation of uh, this sacred area because why it is really a sacred area, there are three rivers that come together and flow, uh, uh, come north, south, and from the west, and these three rivers flow to the east, the rising sun. And that's a very powerful symbol in our Anishinaabe culture. So Ottawa was always our center for thousands of years. There is uh, artifacts all around here that are 6,000 years old. I know that many of the people uh, here try to hide them or, or even destroy them because uh, they don't want uh, our presence in the native cap in this Ottawa in the capital. And that's what's happening right now, that uh, our sacred islands and the sacred waterfall um, and the kettle, the, gra the grand kettle, um, is, uh, is in a sense being taken over by uh, developers in the government of Canada to build condos so that our sacred sites will be lost because they don't want our presence in the nation's capital. Uh, and, uh, and so that's, that's the problem we're facing right now. That land is uh, unceded territory and, it's, and, it, and it is just being stolen. Like all of our land in Canada has been stolen through subterfuge and pretty awful games that are being played. And uh, what our, when I was in uh, out west, the elders say, we want you to be able to come up with a powerful vision in that center, in the National Museum, because most of our sacred objects are in the National Museum. There'll be some day that perhaps we can get them back. They were, they were taken from us, and uh, so a lot of, uh, and so it was, very important to house uh, these sacred objects in in a sacred place. So they they told me you you have to um, put together a building that really is a sacred place for people, a spiritual place for people, uh, and uh, and so. Um, we went together and we had a vision together for, for, for the National Museum. And, uh, and, uh, and when we presented the vision to, uh, to uh, the people and the Prime Minister who made the final decision, he selected it as the vision for Canada because he said it doesn't uh, it is not uh, a colonial building. It doesn't represent another country outside of Canada. It actually comes, it represents the land itself from Canada and therefore it, it should be a building like that because we're all come because we appreciate the land. We appreciate the beautiful country of Canada and. We, and it's appropriate to have a building that, that reflects the land itself that's here. So uh, he selected uh, me to be the architect of his vision for the National Museum. And uh, I must say, I may, may not have liked his politics, but he was an amazing client. And he, he really um, was extremely supportive because when I presented him the design of the building and the fact that I wanted it to be uh, made of stone and that it, and it felt, wanted to feel like it was like the stone of the Rocky Mountains that are carved and formed by water and by nature. And, uh, he, when he saw the model, he says, of course, I understand what you're doing here. He says, I'm a canoeist. 
he says, when I canoe, I can see how the water swirls and forms. And he says, I can see, I can see what you're, what you're doing because uh, you're relating to the water and you're relating to the land. And so he uh, made sure that it was approved and he supported the design. And uh, so, um, and he was the kind of person that uh, he wasn't fixed. He could change his mind about things, which I found um, extremely helpful in many ways in my discussions with him. So uh, the museum is his vision and also the vision of our elders out west. But when I came to uh, Ottawa, the people, my elders said, when you come to Ottawa, you go see William Commander, because William Commander uh, is the Algonquin elder that has a vision for the nation's capital. And when you go there, make sure you, you give a tobacco offering to the Great Kettle and to the falls, because we've been doing that for thousands of years. And, and so it's so important that you, you do that and recognize that Ottawa is, is special in our hearts. That's where Parliament is. That's where uh, a lot of our ancestors are buried. And, uh, and the museum is where people would, would come with their canoes and and before they went around the falls. And so it has a lot of significance for us. It's our sacred site for thousands of years. And, uh, and so when I went to see William, of course, he, he said, he, he really gave me a history of, of the whole area. And I spent a lot of time with William. And we worked with the National Capital Commission Gene Piggott and Marcel Baudry, and both of them planned that it would be given back to the Algonquins because it was taken from the Algonquins um, because they wanted to, um, they met William Commander's forefathers, uh, a delegation from Queen Victoria, and that's why that area is called Victoria Island. And there was an agreement made that and they and they struck coins and everything and had a big ceremony that they would only take the pines for the tall ships and leave everything else to the Algonquins that was the agreement because they needed the pines to build their huge navy because they wanted to create this big empire and the huge tall pines in the Ottawa Valley and and all, all these rivers and everything they needed to create their uh, navy. Um, so um, that's, so they, but unfortunately not, they not only took all the wood uh, to create this empire, but uh, they also uh, took the land by force and forced the people away and from, from their uh, sacred site. Um, and I feel it's very important to regain that site because it's precious to all the, all the Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin people are the host nation, and, but it is important for all Anishinaabe people from the Atlantic to the Rocky Mountains. And as a Blackfoot, I'm an Anishinaabe as well. So just to give you some history, of this indigenous city, Ottawa, uh, and, uh, and just have you understand how important this area is to all of us. And you know, uh, there are people here having ceremonies and, and uh, living in peace with each other and with strong uh, governance that were respectful of people. Indeed, the American Constitution, the first democratic government, was based on the great law of the Haudenosaunee people. 
their their basis for governance. So the American Constitution uh, is actually based on on the on the, on the uh, governance of our people. So uh, we were, in a sense, cons uh, treated everyone as sovereign. Everyone has a responsibility to the Creator because they have been given this gift of life. And it's so important, and that's what we're taught. We're, we're taught that, that you, you have to take responsibility in how you treat people. You have to treat people in a good way. That if you are a, a person that loves freedom, you have to understand that that the fellow human being that sits across from you is is the same. So you have to support and respect his freedom too, or his or her freedom. And it starts by taking responsibility for that. And you have to take responsibility for the fact that the only way that you survive is because of all your life givers. And all your life givers are the birds, animals, fish, all the plants and herbs and medicine, and all those beings that give up their lives so that your life is sustained. And so you have to realize that you have to respect all your life givers. And so all your life givers need to be respected in that way that you have to understand that and be humble that everything around you, you're dependent on everything around you. So when you plan for the future of seven generations, you have to plan for the future of all seven generations around you. And those messages, uh, we are, we've been asked to, um, um, in a sense, represent Canada at the Biennale in Venice. And we're to bring these messages to the Biennale in Venice. And, uh, and that will be at the end of May that we're going there. So now we're putting all that together and uh, and uh, and you can ask Adoya, my wife here. Hi. If you if you need any information about supporting that uh, presentation that we're making with eighteen other architects in Canada and the United States, which we call Turtle Island. There's no but, borders for us. Yeah, yeah. so we can talk all about, he's here, right? And he has a lot to say, as you guys can see. So um, why don't we then just join you outside? And uh, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you.